What's going on guys, it's Mike for Sim Racing 604 and today I'm going to be talking about the Motec i2 software and specifically how to integrate it with Assetto Corsa Competizione. Assetto Corsa Competizione does allow you to use the Motec i2 software to analyze your laps and you can get all sorts of information to help you find where you might be losing time and uh, make some simple improvements based on data. So this is a simple install. It takes all of about five minutes and the software is totally free. Uh, so I'll show you how to get all that up and running. This isn't meant to be an, uh, a master class on how to use the Motec i2 software. There's way more going on than I know what to do with, if I'm being honest. This is generally going to be used as an install guide and just to show you some basic tips on where you might be losing lap time using the uh, data analysis in Motec i2. So that's it, um, five minute install, totally free. So let's go ahead and get into what needs to be done to set this up. All right guys, so the first thing you're gonna wanna do is download and install the software. It's a tiny program, shouldn't take too long. So you can either follow the link in the description or you can Google Motec i2 and it should come up with this download page. And then you just choose the most recent uh, pro version. In this case, it's 1.1.4, etc. And then you're going to save and run this executable file and it will install as most uh, Windows programs do. And I've already done it, of course, so I'm not going to go through this, but uh, just go through the install process as you normally would. And then it's on to the next step. And the next thing we're gonna to want to do is copy a couple of folders over. So under my documents, a set of course of competizione, and then Motec, and then workspaces, you should see two files, one folder, one file actually. You're gonna to wanna to go ahead and copy that. And then go back to my documents, and you should see a Motec folder. Now that it's installed under I2, you should see workspaces again, and then paste in here. I've already got uh, ACC there, but uh, you can go ahead and copy your folder and file over. And that's it for the integration. Now we just gotta make one tweak in ACC. Okay guys, so once we're actually in ACC, there's just one small thing we need to tweak. So you can set up any single player session. In this case, I'm gonna run the McLaren 720S GT3 at Monza for some laps to gather some data. So we can just go ahead and jump into the session. And thankfully, ACC has awesome loading time, so this shouldn't take long at all. And then once we're actually in the session, make sure you go to Setup. And under Electronics, make sure you have Telemetry Laps set to some value greater than zero. So what that basically will do was is record all the data we need for our Motec software. Um, and it will take the most recent. So for example, if we have it set to three laps and you run six laps, it will ignore the first three laps and just take the three most recent. Um, but there's really no reason why you wouldn't just crank this up. I mean, I don't expect to run 50 laps anytime soon, but um, if, you're, if, you're, if you have setups going in ACC, you could set that to a value of say 10 and um, that should be probably enough to, for you to gather sufficient data for you to import into Motec and start analyzing. So that's it on the ACC front and then you can just run your session as normal. All right guys, so now that I've run my laps in ACC, I chose the McLaren 720S GT3 at Monza. So if I go back into Motec in uh, under my documents, the set of course competizione, then you can see I have a whole bunch of files here from previous sessions. I've sorted them by date. So the most recent, so today's date, November 25th. Um, we have uh, three files here from the McLaren 720S session. And uh, the larger one, this eight megabyte file, just double click that, it's the red M And as you can see, it's pulled all the data from that session across the top. And by the way, I'm, uh, this is not a masterclass in an MoTeC analysis. There's a lot more going on here than I know what to do with, but I'm gonna give you guys a quick overview of uh, some cool features. Um, so you can see by lap, you can just double click the lap and you can see what it is. And uh, so anyway, these are, this is speed or PMs. Uh, you can see the speed and RPMs somewhat follow each other, but of course there's more peaks and valleys with the RPMs as we shift gears. We have uh, the gear, brake, and throttle. 
And then as we begin to scroll through the tabs here, you can see there is just a ton of information that's been recorded from our session. Um, I'm not the guy to teach you what to do with all this, but I can show you a few cool things. So um, one thing that is cool to look at, if nothing else, but uh, there's also some valuable information in it, is uh, looking at a track map and seeing where we were braking, where we were accelerating, that kind of thing. So it's a few steps, but uh, not too bad. So we're going to go to add and we're going to choose track report about halfway down. And then the information that it's going to display is, uh, is right here. So as you can see, they all say unavailable. And what I want to see for right now is uh, just break and throttle. So I'm going to get rid of this G-force, this longitudinal G-force. Just go ahead and remove that. You can add whatever data you want here. And uh, so break and throttle, but both showing unavailable. Um, and what happens is if I click OK, it's just showing white. It doesn't show any colors for where I've been accelerating. All those numbers there, uh, These are this is peak speed, the red with the up arrow is the uh, top speed uh, before the braking zone and the blue air, blue down arrow is the minimum speed through a given corner um, but the rest of it is just white and I want to add some color to that so I'm going to right click and choose properties so again I want to see my brake and throttle but currently it's showing as unavailable so I'm just going to double click my brake to start with you can see it's throwing an error there saying brake status unavailable click the select button to the right of that choose brake and it will now have data. Now, Nils from uh, Nils Sim Racing Channel, uh, I want to thank him for this trick. So if you go to evenly spaced bands and choose a number, he used 50. I think that's a great number to use. And then choose gradient. What that's going to do is give you uh, a color darkness depending on how hard you're on the throttle or, uh, or, or brake. So in this case, we're doing brakes, so the darker the color, the more brake force you're using. Purple is not a great color for braking, in my opinion, so we're going to choose red. So I'll go to custom color here, and I will choose red. And as you can see, 100%, say very dark red, all the way down to zero, showing very light, almost a white. Now, important piece of information here, uncheck this bottom box. I don't know why. Nils did it, and it worked. I have to do it to make it work. Choose OK. So it's no longer saying unavailable. So brake is working. So double click throttle and you can imagine where I'm going with this. Choose the select button and to find throttle in here. Evenly spaced bands. All right. So we'll choose 50 again. Gradient. Uh, color. We want to make a custom color. Green seems to be the default choice, the good choice for accelerator. Uncheck that bottom box. Again, don't know why it works. It just kind of works. Choose OK, and we should be good to go. So no more of those uh, saying uh, unavailable. Choose OK, and it has populated our map with uh, a dark green for where I'm hard on the accelerator, dark red for when I'm hard on the brake. As you can see, when I was making our way, my way through this chicane here, I was kind of off throttle and off the brake and uh, around this corner here sorry that I can't remember the name but you can see hard on the brakes there then back on the accelerator a little bit of braking back on the accelerator etc etc and uh, same here coming into Ascari hard braking and then easing off and then getting on it easing off on it, easing off, and then finally on it. So we have uh, a live display if you want it. So if you just click this tiny button here, you can either choose A on your keyboard or press the play button. You can see that's me in real time making my way around. We have speed control up here. You can choose to slow down 20% speed. You can choose to speed it up. Let's go 5X, just flying. But uh, this is real time. So you can see me making my way around. And it gives you some information, but it's not everything I want to show you quite yet. So what else I want to show you or some other things I want to show you. Let's add some more information. So we can add gauges here. So I'm going to add a bar gauge for my brake. So same thing, same way you added uh, uh, information to the map. I'm just going to choose brake here. Scroll over to display. I'm going to choose this bar to be red because it's brake and choose OK. So now I have a brake bar 
And then I'm going to add another gauge. Any guesses? Yes, of course, I'm going to choose throttle. And I will make that throttle green. And we have a throttle bar. It does a nice job auto aligning these. And then I also, oh, by the way, you can resize your map. That's pretty big right now. It's kind of cluttering the screen. Uh, I'm going to choose to add a gauge. It's not really a gauge per se, but a steering wheel here. And even though it's a steering wheel, and of course you're looking for steering inputs, you still have to manually choose your uh, steering input here. What is it? Steer angle. There we go. Don't need a color. You can change that color if you wish, but uh, I'll just keep it as the default. And then one more, I want to see gear. So the gear is slightly more tricky, but add a gauge, choose numeric, find the information, find the gear here. So choose okay. And then the, uh, sorry, uh, as you, you can see when I go to different tabs and come back it says question mark no and I don't know what that actually is it's not actually an error it does have the information but you have to go into properties and uh, under the unit just change that to none and then we have a proper gear indicator it's a bit big so I'm just going to tuck that right where am I going to tuck that right there okay so now we'll choose to go pretty much to the start of our lap here I want to make this a little can I move this up yeah just slightly get myself you can see it's it's a pretty cluttered uh, screen right now so if you're really getting into this you'll have to create a better workspace for yourself but uh, let's go ahead and press play you can see my throttle bar is working, showing 100% throttle. That should dip out as soon as I go into uh, the braking zone. And it does. Then you can see some steering input starting to come into play here. Gear is working. We're in first gear coming out of that. We hit the second gear and third gear and so on and so on. So it looks like everything is working. So cool. We can look at our fastest lap. Big deal, right? Well... Let's stop this. What if we want to compare? What if we want to see where we were faster lap to lap? We can go under data here. And uh, right now it's chosen. I don't know why it chose that. It chose lap three, which was not the fastest. I'm going to choose lap four. As you can see, things kind of recalibrated there. And then uh, I'm going to, and what you can do is add a ghost lap. So uh, if you click this middle box, you guys might have to zoom in, but uh, in the left column of these three selectable columns, uh, that's the uh, that's the sort of default, de facto, what am I trying to say? That is the fastest lap. And then if you choose the middle box, it's going to add a second lap. And as you can see, there's about, what, 0.8 seconds difference between lap three and lap four so we can actually look and we'll just close that by clicking that blue bar again so we can actually see and unfortunately i'm kind of zoomed out here i don't have a tremendously big screen but you can kind of see the braking zone comes a little bit later on my main lap definitely a lot earlier on the accelerator right here um so you can kind of see that. So what we'll do, we'll start the lap, we'll hit play. And we'll just slow it down a bit. So this is half speed, so you'll see the brake come on and my bar graphs, oops, I should have said that before. My bar graphs automatically get doubled. So the gray on the throttle and it'll be gray on the brake as well that is the second lap that's the slower lap so my primary lap which again is the red right here my primary lap is the one that will show uh, the green throttle the red brake so let's go ahead and press play so i was making way, my way around this corner sorry the half speed is messing me up so i'm still and then right here full throttle and then so that uh delay in the second lap that delay in the slower lap was quite a difference in time you can see the red pulling nicely ahead here and we'll skip ahead a bit and a little bit earlier hard to tell looks like i was on the brake a little bit later uh on the faster lap which of course means more time Let's see, where else was there? Right here, it looks like I was able to brake a bit harder. 
again it's hard to tell because they're out of sync but uh, anyway you guys get the point you can compare two laps here and you can kind of fool around with the data um, again I'll just restate that I'm not an expert in MoTeC data and there is so so much information that ACC spits out that uh, you could really you know uh, go in depth into seeing where you're losing time and that kind of thing um, but definitely it's a good idea to have a look at your map uh, some key things here uh, number one you want to make sure that a hundred percent actually I'm gonna disable that second lap so it doesn't get too confused here um, and let's re whoopsies all right so I'll make that map nice and big all right so um, as, as a general rule white zones are not that good that means you're not on the accelerator or on brake you're just kind of cruising that's never good in the world of racing so you want to if you're noticing on your laps that there's uh, you know quite long white areas that's definitely not a good thing you should be either accelerating or braking not just cruising and then uh, you want to look for the dark sections. You don't want to be off throttle uh, too, too long as a general rule. Of course, you're not going to be able to go full throttle around all corners. But as a general rule, um, as you enter straightaways, the sooner you can get uh, to full acceleration, full accelerator, full throttle input, sorry, um, the better. And the sooner you can get to full braking uh, in the braking zones, the better. And uh, another thing to watch out for, are your pedals going to 100%? A lot of people, whoops lost all my bar graphs don't know where those went anyway um yeah are, are your pedals going to a hundred percent because if they are not that means you have calibration issues and you're not getting the most out of your pedals so that's something else to look for uh but again there's more information here than I uh, dare go into. A lot of it, uh, quite frankly, I don't know what to do with, and a lot of it uh, won't be relevant to you. But uh, just an interesting tool to sort of analyze your lap, see where your weaknesses are. Comparing two laps, um, it generally will come down to how fast you got on the accelerator exiting a corner and how fast you got on the brakes, or how late you got on the brakes, rather, uh, entering a corner, entering a braking zone. So uh, a lot of information there, a lot of things to learn from and uh, play around with. And the best part, it's all free. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, we will see you next time.